So, uh, patience and methods. What's the importance of patience and methods in your thesis or paper? Uh, let's imagine this scenario. You read the paper and you find the conclusion that says uh, the use of Sharif Khaled technique for treatment of open TBL fractures uh, with bone loss of 10 centimeters would lead to 100% union in all patients. What do you want to know now? Which part of the paper will you read? What do you want to know? What is Sharif Khaled technique? So I want to know the technique used. Which type of open fracture, so Castello 1, 2, or 3? For how many months did it take to unite? So the follow-up, how long is it in month? So that's why the, the patience and methods is very important. So I will speak about the importance of methodology or patience and methods in the thesis or paper, and I will speak about the writing. And the writing we will, we will take into two different uh, topics the structure and organization of the methods and the writing style. Let's start with the importance. You have to know that patience and methods is the most important part of the thesis or a paper. Why? Because it provides info by which the study can be decided if it's valid or not. So the validity of the study is judged by the, the info you provide in the patience and methods section. And that's why you have to provide a clear and precise description of how the study was done and the rationale for the procedure you chose. It must be written with enough information to achieve three different goals. Number one, so that the study could be repeated by your colleagues to judge or to evaluate whether the results are reproducible or not. Second, the audience can judge if these results and conclusions are valid or not when they read the technique you used, and the referees will look into this section for evidence how you answered the scientific question or the research question. For example, some people reported that uh, in AVN of the femoral head, they used vascularized fibular graft, and 100% of the patients were revascularized and normal and did not require total hip replacement. Unfortunately, this was not reproducible. This was only in the hands of the, of the surgeon who did this study. But for others, they could not prove that this is true. So this is very important, and this is the importance of this part. That's why when we start to write, the order of writing is you put the materials and methods, then you put your results, and then you start putting the discussion, conclusion, then you get back to the introduction and the title. Okay, we come to the important part, the writing, how to write. The patients and methods is obviously divided into patients and methods. Patients, what was examined in our case, these are humans. Number two, various treatment methods used like drugs, if you, if you are researching for drugs or plates or uh, uh, implants used, and when and where the study was done. The methods are how the subjects were manipulated to answer your research question, and how measurements and calculations were taken, and how data was analyzed. These are the two parts. So let's go into details. The writing methods, the complexity of the scientific question necessitates that the writing methods are clear and orderly to avoid confusion. So we will start with structure and organization of your methodology section, and then we will speak second about the writing style. The structure. First, the structure we divided into the following topics. We have to explain clearly how we carried out the study. So we describe the patients involved in this study. We explain how patients were prepared or chosen, when and where the study was done. We describe the study protocol. We explain how measurements were taken and what calculations were made or scores that were performed and how data was analyzed that is statistical tests used or quantitative analysis. Let's take these into details. First, the patients. What do we describe in our patients? We describe demographics like age, gender, and possibly also describe racial composition. Second, we describe the inclusion-exclusion criteria or the selection criteria and rationale for, for enrolling those patients or this sample of population into our study. So these are the inclusion-exclusion criteria. Ethical consideration, this is very important in the patient section. When working with humans, there must be a declaration that the medical center's institutional review board reviewed 
your, your research and has determined that the study protocol adheres to the ethical principles. This is very important. Without having an ethical approval, you cannot publish this anywhere. No research project can be conducted nor published. Second, the preparation of the subjects. We have to mention when and where the study was carried out, detailed description of the preparations done to the patient prior to the experiment or prior to the study. This is very important. And we include in this part the hypothesis. So what we are thinking that if we do this specific technique, this will happen or this would not happen. This is the hypothesis. The controls. So if we have a control group, we will say that we will do this surgery for 30 patients and then we have another 30 patients that do not have this disease and the treatment and variables measured instrumentation and equipment here have to be uh, uh, have to be mentioned by vendor name brand and category so for example if you are studying a certain prosthesis you have to mention the vendor of the prosthesis the name the brand the category the country everything and if you are using a known method with some modifications, you have to describe the modifications you used for the original technique and mention the original technique. Protocol design, this is the most important part. This is where the other researchers or your colleagues, when they want to repeat this study, they will look at this section. This is the important part, the protocol design. The first, you describe exactly the sequence of how the procedures were done or executed. First, you describe the baseline conditions of the patients and also the associated baseline measurements you have for your patients before starting. Second, the sequence of manipulation of independent variables, which are the patients, and subsequent measures, measurements of changes in the dependent variables. So you, you get the population, you do your study, and then you measure the outcome, and here you mention all this. Important to describe also all the relevant aspects of clinical management not controlled by the protocol in the peri-experimental period. So if there are factors that are not controlled by you, especially in our studies, there are many factors that cannot be controlled by the surgeon. This has to be mentioned in this part. Measurements and calculations. The next step, this is the next step in the methods section where to describe what variables were measured and how measurements were made. So, for example, if you measure ranges of motion, you use a goniometer. When you use something like this, you have to describe the measurement instrument, and you describe the manufacturer, the model, how measurements were made. And for the scores, you have to describe the, the name of the score, details of the score, and the original author of the score. Measurement and calculation, also you have to uh, justify sometimes why and, and how certain variables were used. List all the calculations uh, following the description of the measurement. Data analysis, this is a very important part that has to be put in the patients and methods section. This is always the last part of the methods section and you have to find it at the end of the methods section without mentioning any results, just which test did you use. So you describe how data will be presented in the results section. So you will say in the results section, I will give you the mean, the mode, the, the average, the, the sum, the total, the whatever, the comparison between results, and which statistical test will be used for your inferential data. Usually this part is written by the statistician who started with you or who did the design, uh, the, the study design for you and what p-value is deemed to indicate a statistically significant difference. So here you set the p-value or the probability value to say that if it's less than this, it will be significant. If not, it will be, it will be insignificant. And this is important. This is usually given to you by the statistician, but you have to know that it should exist in the patients and methods section. Okay? Writing style. For the patients and methods, the writing style, it should be precise, simple, clear, and in past tense. So everything in the thesis will be written in past tense. Second, use the third person or passive voice. What do we mean by use the third person? Instead of saying, I operated 30 patients, you say, patients were operated by the researcher or by the surgeon. So you just invert the subject and object, okay? So if you have, for example, the scientists performed the experiment, you say it in a, in a passive voice, the experiment was performed by the scientist. Okay? 
Avoid the first person, so don't keep saying I and we. The reference to self and the pronoun I are almost absent from medical writing. This sentence is a bit debatable. Some, some literature use the word I and we uh, to the extent that some of the research books have chapters like this, the passive voice and I. And in these chapters, they, dis they, they discuss the, the debate of whether to use I and we or to use the passive voice. Compound sentences are avoided. Unimportant details are avoided. This is very important. Compound sentences, this is very common. We sometimes found the sentence of in a, a, one paragraph of six or seven lines consisting of one sentence. This is not needed in scientific writing. Just make, make yourself clear and simple and concise and precise. So the, and present the elements as clearly and logically as possible because you are writing a catalog for anybody who wants to reproduce what you did. So if you are describing a technique, you need people to reproduce this technique easily. So when they read your catalog of how to do, they can repeat what you did easily. Okay? Description of the preparations, protocol, and measurements should be organized chronologically. So whoever is repeating this experiment will just follow the steps in the same order that you did and will probably reach the same result as you did. If you have a large amount of details, then divide it into subheadings or subtopics and organize these topics from the most important to the least important. Don't keep talking about least important topics and then go to the most important. So you have to organize them from the most important to the least important. So the take home messages for the methodology section is that it's the most important part of a research paper. It provides a clear and precise description of how your study was done. It consists of two parts, patients and methods. First, the structure. The structure consists of patients, where we, we mentioned the demographics of the patients, age, gender, racial composition, inclusion, exclusion criteria, and this section has to have the ethical committee approval. Don't forget this. Second, the preparation, the control group, the treatment uh, variables and the equipment, the study protocol, including the exact technique that you used in the same chronological order that you used and preparation of patients, measurements and calculations, why you use them, how you use them, statistical data analysis, and then we come to the writing style. It should be precise, simple, clear. In the past tense, use the third voice, avoid, avoid the pronoun uh, I. So use the passive voice always. It has to be in a logical flow, and if it's too big, then organize it into subheadings or subtopics. Thank you very much.